Hi everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. It is August 21st. I am picking up right where I left off in the middle of trying to get a new method implemented on the dollars, specifically valid dollars to start with, called flip sign. And the reason for that is that I've changed the UI to show withdrawals, basically sell orders and taxes, as negatives, and I want a convenient way of doing that. So now you could argue that what I'm doing here is far from convenient. I'm going to all this work to express this concept in the domain when I've actually already got it working in my stock market table model just by subtracting from zero. But this is a clunky way of describing the intent of what I'm doing. And I think it's really important to, you know, when you discover a repeated pattern in any of your code to go down to where that concept really belongs and put it in. So that's what we're doing. We're putting it in here. And Java's type system is, is sort of messing with us. But um, that's all right. We're gonna we're gonna fix its bacon, <laughs> and the way we're gonna do that is um, going down to here. Flip sign. I'm just gonna implement a little stub bit of code, which throws a new not implemented exception. Um, or is it fail fast dot? How, how exactly do we have that working? It would be part of our utilities. Unreachable code exception. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so we don't have a not implemented exception. But we really oughta, so I'm gonna pause for a moment, copy, paste, dash or whatever. Not implemented an exception. Unless it's already in here. Require. Yeah. So Unimplemented code. Code was executed. It right. Good enough. So moving on. Now we have a not implemented exception, so we will throw it. And should not take a parameter. There we go. And now we'll run our test. Great. So this should not return a value. Or that should not take a value. Excuse me. And we will just return this. And this should not be, wow, we were running into static type problems all over the place. I still like type, static type systems, though. When you get into a really large application, they save your bacon. Um, static type systems are really nice in big, in big applications, or even moderately sized applications. Heck, even this application is pretty small, but sure came in handy when um, uh, several episodes ago when I was converting the, uh, the icon stuff to include the tooltips. But uh, that that convenience does have a cost, and the cost is that sometimes you have to jump through amazing hoops to get everything to work. Uh, but those hoops are also a warning sign that maybe your type system hasn't been thought out all the way through. At any rate, uh, now we want to go uh, plus 20 to minus 20, or have a positive to negative. So we're going to expect a negative a minus $20 and we're going to give it a $20 and flip the sign. Okay. 
there. We expected blah, 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 blah. And I think, you know, the easiest way to do this probably is to just say, um, zero minus whatever. So let's say return create zero dot minus this dot amount or minus this. And there we go. And going the other direction from negative to positive should just work. But I'm going to include it anyway to be thorough. You know what's interesting to me? Because this implementation doesn't actually uh, involve any special knowledge, I think I can use this same code to make invalid dollars work. All, I'm actually going to promote this up to valid dollars, or to the dollars class, I think. I'm, yeah, I think that's a fairly clean way of doing it. Mm, if I had a pair partner, I'd I'd want to talk about it, but I don't, so you guys will just have to tell me what you think in the comments, um, which unfortunately I usually don't get for several episodes after I've already moved on, uh, because I record so many episodes at the same time. But, you know, c'est la vie. So anyway, um, we should expect the inverse of an invalid dollars to be also invalid. And that is going to fail with a not implemented exception. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it up there in dollars and that should work. And I am going to move this up because I like having my abstracts after all of my concretes. So does that work? It works. Hallelujah. Okay, so now we're done with the domain model, which really took longer than it should have, but I'm a little bit rusty. Now I can go back here and say current year dot total order sell orders dot flip sign, and it should work. which is pretty cool. And in a way, it reflects that this is purely a UI thing. Um, I might want to go back and actually flip the sign in the domain model inside the stock market year. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm going to wait on that because um, that, again, has implications for what do we do, what we do when we're dealing with multiple accounts. And I'm not even sure if we're ever going to reach that. So for now, we'll just say it's a pure UI level issue. And in the future, it may not be. So there we go. It's all working. If we sell more, then we have lots of taxes. That's great. Um, oh. Well, that's interesting. Everything breaks down once we start getting into negative territory. Um, that's okay. I've already got a note on that. I mean, it's okay in a sense. The math does add up, but obviously the government's not going to give us money if we oversell. Um, what needs to be happening is that we need to get down to a balance of zero and stop. Uh, so that's, again, something to deal with in the future. So, uh, similarly, need to handle case where account runs out of money. All kinds of funkiness ensues.
<laughs> I've misspelled funkiness, okay. Well, fine. So, now, what's next? Uh, that takes care of the stock market. I think I've been avoiding this question long enough. I think it's time for me to actually introduce the remaining fields. And what we have, actually we have a nice spike on that. Do, do, do in the MIG layout. Yeah, this is how we want it to actually look. Starting balance, cost basis, yearly spending. Starting year, ending year interest rate, tax rate. I believe that's correct. Um, because we can't influence taxes and that is pretty much everything else. Here, starting balance, cost basis, sell orders, which is yearly spending, starting year, ending year, Interest rate, of course, affects the growth, and tax rate affects the taxes. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, oh, that's interesting. So, Well, I guess what comes next is getting the years in there or possibly the interest rates. The interest rates might be a little bit easier. Now, this is kind of neat. This, this is where we start taking the, the proto-architecture that we've got um, and expanding it out. I define architecture as the parts of the system that are the repeating patterns in the way you do things. So, and that's one of the reasons I've been taking so long on just dollars text field and getting it pretty clean as, and you know exploring different design approaches. Because once we start taking this out to other text fields, now we're gonna start repeating doing, we're gonna follow the patterns we've already set down. So we'll use the self-renderable, we'll use all this stuff. And we want it to be good. So this is kind of a point of no return where we go from just a simple class with kind of a funky design, which is the self-renderable, to repeating it in other classes like a percent text field, a year text field. And once we do that, making changes to that design becomes much more painful. And in my opinion, the job of the Agile architect is to make change easy. So you want to really avoid creating situations where in order to change the design you have to go visit five different classes. Now one way we can do that is we can have all these text fields extend sort of a self-rendering text field or something like that as a base class and we'll look at that. But even so, we're going to start locking some of these decisions in and I've been postponing that as long as possible but now I think it's uh, we postponed it as long as we can. So that also raises the question of we've got this tax rate and growth rate they're really the same thing I mean they're really just rates so I think we might want to combine these into one because I don't want to make a growth rate text field and a tax rate text field especially since they're both going to be percentages um, I actually wonder if rather than making them rates at all, maybe we should just make them percentages. So we've got a dollars and we need a percentage class. Um, so some fundamental design net questions coming up. We are just about out of time in this episode, so I don't think I'm going to spend time on it now. Uh, and I'm actually going to take a little break here so you guys can get your two cents in. But this is where we will pick up next time. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, some interesting stuff coming up. Uh, thanks again. I will see you next time.